over the course of filming my most challenging and longest investigation ever, which also left me permanently scarred. There was some lost footage that wasn't included in the original Demon House documentary. For the first time, I have decided to release these terrifying events that include additional night vision investigations of the house. This first part is during one night where Father Mike, the exorcist that conducted the exorcisms on LaToya Ammons, requested to immediately visit the home to unearth ritual items and exorcise them. World-renowned psychic medium Chris Fleming also joined us. Do you, do you want me to put this down somewhere? Do you? Yeah, just yeah, right. that's the uh, counter. Okay. Right do you want to just go down there now, Father? Yeah. And let's could. just get a sense of it. Yeah, we could. Uh, if you want to have Chris, There's someone in that doorway, just beyond the doorway. Uh, the man. I don't know. I can't see. I don't know what's up here. Chris senses a male entity in the same exact spot where later we capture a black mass manifesting and lunging towards Dr. Barry Taff. Chris then detects a residual energy, again, in the same spot that Dr. Taff did. Okay. Oh, it's really bad in there. That same sense of nausea and like you're gonna throw up. Reverse peristaltic action, very strong in there. Uh, there was a reports of banging on the walls. The boys would often be thrown into walls. Okay. That was very common for the kids to be thrown against the wall. There used to be a freezer here, and one kid got thrown against the freezer. Zach, you're really apprehensive. What's up? You feeling like right there or something? What? What's up? You don't like me? You just said, I don't think they like you. I don't think they do. Okay. I don't know why I said that. You gotta be careful because they're connecting through you. That's what that is. Let's let's just go downstairs. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, um, for the camera people and sound, would you want to wear a Benedictine medal? I actually have my own protection. I have, actually you. have some too. You, you're good. Yeah. yeah, we're good. As we make our way into the basement, I begin feeling very spacey and begin to spin. You guys, I feel really just like you're just sw back. you're swaying back and forth. <laughs> I just feel like just just to you. dizzy. I don't want to confirm this with one of these devices, but there's multiple spirits down here that are moving around very quickly, and I'm seeing them move around very quickly, just like I did as a child. They make you dizzy. Your energy, kind of like if you're going to pass out or you're getting really tired, and all of a sudden, you know. What Chris picks up on here is exactly how the grandmother said they will jump in and out of people very fast. I can't watch everybody at the same time. It's like it moves too fast, you know? Please respond. How many spirits are down here or in this house with us? How many? Tell me. Father Mike now instructs us to begin digging up the ritual items the police discovered two feet below this dirt. They have reburied them, possibly keeping this portal still open. I kind of don't think we should dig it up, dig this stuff up. No, I think we need to close this down. I mean, has anybody dug it underneath here yet? Did they found anything? The policeman dug, we found several items two feet deep, and that's about where they should still be. Do you want us to dig those items up with the priest here? Do you want us to dig these items up? It feels like something is telling me not to dig these items up. I think it wants you, those things to stay. I don't think they should stay. 
Make a sound so we can hear you. It's not like it's trying to speak through my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really does. I mean, I don't use it. I don't, it's not a normal thing for me. Especially after I ate. Maybe if I didn't eat all day. But Something I changed. Something changed. Chris begins feeling what I'm feeling. There's a lot of tension in the air right now. What is down here with us? Who's here now? Something's moving in. Getting eyes closed behind me. I don't want to dig those items up. Change. Who's here now? It definitely changed. Oh, it's getting cold and it's like something not happy. It's like standing near this stairway. Show yourself. And interesting is that my stomach growls whenever you make a command. When you're not saying anything, nothing happens. Why did my stomach do that? Okay. Hold on. I just felt like there was something inside of my stomach. Yeah, no, I, 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 I kind of felt the same thing because I, I, I'm kind of baffled. Because yeah. you only do uh, that when you're making a command. Should I get the spare box if they want it? Yeah. I want us to do it? Yeah. The spirits that are here in this house, this device is going to give you an opportunity to project your thoughts and also to speak to us. What part of the body are you making noises in Father Mike? What's in the dirt? Dirt. Oh, did you hear that? I said it again. The dirt. Dirt. It said plan is day. Dirt. What's in the dirt? Did you hear that? I said it again. Can you tell me the name of the woman? Who was the lady that lived here with the three kids that was possessed? Is it Hammonds? Hammonds was That's the last name. name. Oh my god. Hammonds. Okay. Wow, that was... Okay. Is it Hammonds? Okay. Wow, that was... Okay. Zach! Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> That was so loud. Black. Zach! Yeah. I need the name of the man that used to abuse LaToya. Did he bury the objects in the ground? No. No. How many ghosts are here? One. One. One? Just said one. One ghost? The, the, the spirit who said one, what's your first name? Do you want me to put the amplifier on? Whoa, a big giant anomaly flew around you, Chris, and ended right by your shoulder. Incredibly, as this anomaly manifests over Chris, it seems to also disrupt the electromagnetic fields, causing interference in Chris's spirit box. It's static. 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 We're doing static too. Big static. Whoa. I need to talk to just spirits that know about this house. Was anybody ever murdered in this house? Yes or no? Yes. Was anybody ever murdered in this house? Yes or no? Yes. Whoa. Is the boy's name Trey? Whoa. The floor just creaked right above my head. Like yeah, I heard that. Did you hear it? Yeah. Who's upstairs? Is there somebody upstairs? Me. 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 What's your name? Matt. Yeah. Same voice. What did he say? It was Matt. Matt. Same exact voice. It said me. Same voice. Is there somebody upstairs? Me. 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 What's your name? Yeah. Same voice. In my other investigations, I have encountered other demonic hauntings and infestations where the demons will address themselves as common names to try to trick you into thinking it's a friendly human spirit. And we asked who that was, and he told us it was Steve. At the time, we were communicating with, I believe his name is Steve. We kept getting this name on our EVPs about Steve. Do you want to dig? Do you want me to? Sure. 
As Father Mike witnesses and validates this communication evidence, it is now time to dig up the ritual items in an attempt to close the portal. Are the crosses manifesting on the top there? Do you see? Uh, when we were digging, it was, they were manifesting. They were dripping the oil. On these it's, steps? Yeah, on the riser part. Yeah, it's uh, straight up to my gut. So, okay, yeah, they were like here, right in the middle. I don't see anything. They and started to manifest when you were digging? When we were digging, all of a sudden they were dripping. Was yeah. this the substance that the CPS worker touched? Yeah, I think she and touched. And uh, made her hand go down? Yeah. Do you not like us digging? Look at what's that? that what is that, dude? What's that shiny thing? Well, it's definitely a sock. Okay, there's a sock. And then, there it is. Those are the things. We begin to discover the ritual artifacts, and as they are unearthed, I begin feeling a lot of anxiety, and that this shouldn't be occurring. Is that a child sock? Yeah. The weight is part of it? The weight, that's heavy, thing. that's the weight right there. This is to a window, old wood window, it's the yeah. weight. We saw the little hole there, we thought that our drapery cord would go I'm sure this could be used to kill somebody, too. But that's what we thought, that it was a murder weapon, or or the boy died Could be. by hitting him somehow, or choking him. And the shoe harness should be in there. Or no. There it is. And his sock. You know. Yeah. Those are personal items. Yeah. Yeah. They, they went a little bit further over here, but we weren't finding anything at that level. What's that thing way back there? Uh, right. that's all is that's that a fingernail? That's that way back there. That's a fingernail, I think. This is buried in the ground, too? No, it's too deep. What's all that black thread in? Right. Uh, next to your shovel, to, to the the left, uh, your left. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear the, the child? It's like a f child cry. As I dig deeper, we all hear an unexplained child scream, and incredibly, we capture this on our camera's audio. The, the left, uh, your left, left, uh, your left, left, uh, your left. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did what you hear that? The child. So we heard a uh, direct voice phenomena, disembodied voice. That was crazy. Sound like keep it was digging. Keep digging. Right keep digging. It was right that means above. something. Yeah. Is there a body underneath here, buried? Said I am. I am the child. Said I am. Said I am. Why don't we uh? Upstairs. We could also check to see if, if we have any bleeding from the oil. Father Mike wants to check the windows upstairs, where before, when the police dug up the items, a mysterious oil type substance began dripping from the blinds. This is where it was dripping. Here, here. Is that dry? This is wet. Is it wet? Yeah. It's wet now. Oh, God, yeah. It's wet? Now. Okay, it, that's the man of it. Got it. What? It's all... It's what starting. Oh, that just started. It's, watch, it's starting right now. Watch, it's expanding. That just got bigger. Okay, yeah, no, that's what we... That uh, wasn't there, because I remember I went through here. Okay, it's so coming. There it goes. Yeah. Did you see it? That's it. It's going through the pores. Get that on camera. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Look at it. It just got bigger. Yeah. Well, look. Okay. Look at it. It just that's, got wider. Yeah, that's what it's doing. See, look at it. On my yeah. finger. You see it? Yeah. It's like dripping off. It's like coming out of the pores. It's getting yeah. wetter and wetter. You can see that. That's getting wet. It's getting wet. It's wet. Look. Look. Holy shit. Oh my god. It's like dripping off. 
at all. It's like coming out of the pores. It's getting yeah. wetter and wetter. You can see that. That's it's getting wet now. It's getting wet. It's getting wet. Yeah. Look. Holy Oh my God. Just like two years prior, when the police discovered the items in the basement and the house began to bleed an unknown liquid, it is unbelievably happening again. Is that the same type of substance? It, it seems the same type. All of a sudden, I have a very powerful feeling come over me. Something wants me returning to the basement dirt. I can't explain why, but right now, all I want to do is rebury these objects back in the ground, regardless of the consequences. The others have no idea that I'm reburying the objects, and just as I seal the hole, Chris has to sit down and gather himself for the first time tonight. at this point and goes outside. I quickly grab a camera and go after him to find out what's wrong. I am a bit disturbed with you rebearing the objects and listening to those that are unsaved. I have a very bad feeling. To keep it as a portal, I'm not sure that's gonna be helpful to the project. And they're, 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 all of a sudden came a wall between me and you because we were working together and all of a sudden um, we're on opposite teams. I didn't know you felt so strongly about that. 
that action just made me feel he could jeopardize jeopardize everything. Mm -hmm. It's obvious at this point that Father Mike has witnessed paranormal events inside this house. To suggest that action needs to be done in order to bless the objects and close this portal. I really did not feel that it was me that wanted to bury this yeah, stuff. Okay. You know, I want you to understand that. Yeah, yeah. The thing is going to work if it's from God, not from them. Father Mike needs to exercise all of the objects that may have been used in the dark ritual in order to close this portal. But there's a problem. I can't find the woman's fingernail. That fingernail might be tough to find. If I can't find the fingernail, can I bring it to you? Um. Well, you made a good, a good effort to uh, find it. I don't ever find the fingernail that we reburied, which begs the question: Could the missing ritual item keep the portal open? Did you see evidence that oh, they yes. were still here? Yes, yeah. You saw evidence that the spirits were still home? And they were definitely, we, we definitely had evidence. I exercise you by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, by the God who ordered you to be poured into the water by Elisha the prophet, so that its life-giving powers might be restored. I exercise you so that you may put to flight all the powers of the enemy through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will come to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. Amen. Father got really, really angry with me that I buried those objects, so he wants me to do a follow-up investigation of the home to see if the darker spirits are still here, which I will do. But as of now, my work here is done. In this particular visit to Chief Miller's house, he wants to tell me about something disturbing that happened to him and his wife immediately after coming home from the demon house the same night. You get back from the demon house. Yes. And what happened? I went to bed about two o'clock in the morning. There's an incredibly loud crash in my house uh, down below. You hear this? Yes. And it's not like a book falling off a shelf. It's like a bookcase falling. That's what I likened it to. It was that loud. And was your wife with you? Uh, yes. At okay, the time. she heard it too? Yes, she does. So I grab a gun, flashlight, and I start walking through the house to see what, I, I either somebody, I thought someone broke in the house or some something major happened in my house. So I came down to the main floor, Zach, and shine my flashlight on to try to find whatever had fallen or whatever was in my house, and there wasn't anything here. And I'm kind of stealthily coming down the stairs, creeping down, I'm looking around the corner, looking in the dark basement, and I'm about two, three feet away from my alarm panel, and all of a sudden my alarm, which I set every single night, uh, says alarm off. Alarm off. And my alarm can't turn off unless you put in a four digit code and actually push off. So that's never happened before. I reach over and I push the alarm again. I set it again on home. And a second later, the alarm says alarm off. So it, dis it disarmed itself again. Alarm off. Is this the same force that knows how to go in and manipulate DVR settings? So how many systems have you installed, Jeff? Well, I've been doing it for 30 years, so I, okay. I don't know, thousands. Have you had a system do this? No, never have I had this issue ever. So how could the settings be manipulated inside this system? If oh, it can't be done, only here. Okay. Only on Only site. here. On site. How is that possible then? How is this happening? I don't know how it's happening. Obviously, you know. I mean, I put you know five in a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, at least. And and this never is had the issues. second problem, the second time with the second system that right. we've had problems. Right. Well, we've already had another system in here, and you had the same issue. I mean, what? That's two. Right. And um, it's two. That's two. I mean, back to back. What are the odds in two 
security systems doing this no. with the type of problems? No. I no. Mean, I, I mean, two, two different manufacturers. Right, two. <laughs> two systems, separate manufacturers, having the protected settings manipulated by something unexplained so they don't record. All of a sudden, everyone in the house, including other workers installing motion lights, hears a woman scream from inside. Did you hear a voice go, hey! Like that? Yeah, so I just said you guys yelling down there? No, we weren't. It sounded like some woman yelling or something. Bro, Jesus. Exactly. Holy s. You heard it, you heard it. We thought there was a woman right here. What did you hear, Jeff? It, it was just like a, like a, kind of a small squeakier, like, yeah, something like that. And then, then we walked over here, then we heard it again. Can you tell me what you heard? Like a holler, like a yell, like a woman's hollering or something. From that time period, in the last three years, has your alarm done that? No, never. Okay. It just coincidentally did that the same night that you were at the demon house. Correct. Digging up the artifacts and the dirt and witnessing a minor rite of exorcism. Correct. So I went upstairs and I grabbed the phone off my nightstand. And like I told you at the very beginning, I charge it up every night because I expect middle night phone calls. And I picked it up and it showed the battery symbol. And I watched the battery go from 100% to nothing. The, batter the phone went dead and I couldn't, couldn't restart it. How many phones is that now? Four. I'm stunned. Right after the workers heard the disembodied voices at the house, their cell phones did the same exact thing. Yeah, and my battery just went yeah, complete, completely dead. How much battery did you have? It was like, like 97% charged. And it just went completely dead? Just dead. <laughs> I just tried calling you. And I yours? I, I, I went to the Apple side. If what happened with both your phones? My Mine. battery went from 97% to zero, like, instantaneously. Yeah. Mine just totally went to the Apple down. screen. It, it did go through my mind that you were at that house earlier in the night, and that, especially when the alarm went off, um, and then later the phone discharged, and then I started thinking it might be related to the house. Just that just happened. Right, because we've just seen things night. at the house that we couldn't explain, and then I come to my house and see things I can't explain. I have come to the conclusion because of everything that transpired and all the things that I had witnessed and heard about, that it affected women and children physically and the stronger being men, men electronically. Something came back with him. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was that demon, but something came and I don't want it back. One of the most terrifying moments in Demon House history was the incident with our cameraman Adam at the hotel. I want to go to the house, man. After terminating him from the project for his and our own safety, he later agreed to meet with Jay Wosley, one of my other crew members, to film a polygraph test. My name is Dennis De Bernardis. I'm a certified polygraph examiner for over 33 years. Retired from NYPD, former private investigator. I was called in to do a polygraph examination on a gentleman regarding um, some paranormal activity that had taken place in a home in Gary, Indiana. I would like to go over the questions and I'll go over the responses of the subject. Uh, these are the questions that were asked and these are the subject's responses. I asked Adam if he had vomited in Zach's hotel bathroom after filming in the house in Indiana. His response was yes. I then asked him if he had felt a stabbing pain in his stomach before he vomited blood. And again, his response was yes. The next question was, did you see a demon-like creature in the elevator at the hotel room in Indiana after filming at Zach's house? His answer was yes. Yes. I then asked him if uh, Zach's house had made him violent and his answer was yes, and he said the visualization of that demon-like creature made him both paranoid and violent. I asked him if he was terrified at what he experienced at Zach's house in Indiana, and his response was yes. I asked him if he had experienced severe back pains after filming inside the house, and his response again was yes. 
I asked him if he had a dream about Zach's house prior to ever arriving there, and his answer and his response was yes. I then asked him if he had screamed for Zach after he saw the demon-like creatures in the hotel elevator because of his fear, and his response was yes. I asked him if he had visions of killing Zach, and his response was yes. I asked him if he had visions of Zach killing himself with the broken glass from the mirror in the bathroom, and his response was yes. I asked him before he went to Zach's house if he had believed the stories he heard about the paranormal activities that had taken place, and his answer was no, he didn't believe. I then asked him if he had believed that there were demons in Zach's house from what he had experienced, and his answer was yes, now he does believe. I asked him if he heard a growl in the basement at Zach's house while filming with Dr. Barry Taft. He said he did and so did others. Adam Albrecht was truthful in responding to all questions asked regarding the paranormal activity that had taken place in Zach's house in Gary, Indiana. He wasn't lying. And obviously he's been telling us the truth. You know, he was truthful about things that happened, so this will be something that'll stay with him forever looking at me personally if I'm the person who you're saying well that guy knows what he's talking about I would say you're a fool because if someone looking like me came up to me and started talking to me about how they'd seen a demon in an elevator I would laugh at them and probably just walk away <laughs> and I wish it wasn't true like I do wish it wasn't true because it it has been something that since then I've doubted in my mind because it's so insane. And as I'm walking to the elevator, I have the thought in my head, if you're real, stop me from getting on this elevator. And I press the button. And then the elevator opened two inches and stopped. And I saw the devil. And it scared me. It scared me. When I saw that face, it scared me. And uh, I screamed. I screamed for Zach. And I, you know, thought about this a lot. Like, I, I had that moment where it was like, this is real. We're here and this is real. And this isn't something that somebody's making up for money. And you believe. Then you believe. If you don't, you won't. That's it. And this isn't something that's just explainable easily because of people wanting it to be real. It's real. It's real. And you're not going to believe that unless you believe it. Unless it's happened to you. This next moment occurs after I get a sudden feeling to visit the house for no reason whatsoever.
of a sudden, as Billy turns his camera back in the same exact spot it just was, his camera now captures what appears to be two glowing eyes looking back at him. As we try to debunk this, we can't because when we look at the same exact shot from just a few seconds ago, the one with the glowing eyes, there is nothing which rules out any possibility of reflection of lights. The grandmother would also say the children would see these same eyes before more activity occurred. My granddaughter said, oh, I can't take it anymore. So I'm watching all of them going from one to the next. I can't take it anymore. Remember to make them stop. I can't look in their eyes. I can't look in their eyes. I said, don't look at them. Don't look at them. Someone down there? What are you doing? Hello? Someone down there. Somebody get over here. Just change in there, dude. What did you see, man? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, I, I uh, felt this ice cold wind go down my my back here, and then I was just paralyzed. And then I saw something on this camera, something glowing. And when I saw that thing creep in, I felt this just surge of energy come up those stairs and just break me out of that, like, paralysis state. Everyone turn your volume up right now, because during that light anomaly, we also captured a hissing sound. Somebody get over here. Somebody get over here. Scared the out of us, bro. <laughs> you okay? What? Blood. Let me see. Keep tasting blood. Like when you started running, and I was following you out, and then I started tasting blood in my mouth. But we didn't hit or anything. You spit blood just now? Where's the light on this? I'm shaking. Let me here. Let me see, Jeff. Yeah. I mean, it's mild, but see it all? Right. Let me see. Wow. Yeah, it's pink. What the? Yeah. F Jay. Yeah. yeah here, you can see it. Come here. Pink, Come here. As I head back inside, I begin taking pictures of the house. What are you? When just like what happened with Chief Miller and the workers, 
My phone all of a sudden dies with over 50% battery life. They do not want to be seen. The electrical field, man. Look it. Look it. Look at my phone. I had 48% battery power. And my phone is turning off right now. Wow. You see that? Yeah. Dead. Just turned off as I was taking that photo. I had 48% battery power. I just looked at it. What did Father Michael say? How once they knew, it knew they knew its name, it started to try to stop them. You were trying to take a photo, it kills your phone. Right. This thing's smart. I just got really aggravated when I saw it. I just had rage when I looked at you, Jay. I saw it. I don't like this right now. I don't, I don't like this how I'm feeling. I have a lot of rage. <laughs>